Hi everyone, it's Monday. I'm on the way to the Buds Dementia Scheme again and I'm so excited because it's going to be in a really nice area. So I'll update you later when I get home all about it and how amazing it's been hopefully. So this is where I am for the day. Look at this beautiful place in this beautiful park. that's it I'm back from the bud scheme and as you saw it was such a beautiful setting imagine just working there every day just in the middle of a park it was just it's really nice such a lovely building all the residents that came were absolutely lovely residents actually what do you call um clients residents they're not patients um, I don't oh, I hate the word service users I don't want to say residents either because they don't live there they're just coming for activities the people let's just call them the people so the people that attended there were all lovely and the staff again I was with the fa fabulous woman that she is that I can't mention her name because of confidentiality but she's just incredible and she's so lovely with all of the people there and we just sat down we all had a table each so we played dominoes we did some coloring we did some word searches there was a lady there as well that had this ipad and she was doing different challenges and things with them on the ipad and that was quite um good to see it was quite nice and we got the memory box out again and went back in time and got the pinnies on it was fabulous we had the radio playing and we all sat down as well and had lunch together i can't remember if i said this in my last vlog but at lunchtime at 12 o'clock we all we dish out the meals and then we all sit down together and eat together so we get a meal as well while we're there and it was just so nice to just be able to sit and talk to people whilst you're eating and it's like a normal nice social environment it's just wonderful and I don't know why we don't do this across healthcare why don't we all just sit down and eat together with patients residents service users whatever you want to call them why why don't we do that because it's so nice and it's just a lovely social thing to do and you get the time to sit and talk properly to people I loved it it was just another fantastic day I love it there so that's it for this week for the bud scheme I haven't got any more days booked in because I'm, I've got a busy week so I've got on Wednesday I've got training at the university because I am going to be part of the buddy mentoring scheme for a new student coming into the university. So I'm going to be part of that. I haven't told you about that yet because I'm going to do a completely separate vlog on it. So I'm waiting for that one but that is coming. And then Thursday I'm going with the safeguarding team and that's I think it's 9 till 5 on Thursday. I'll double check the dates, I'm sure it's 9 till 5 um, but I'm going with the safeguarding team and finding out more about what they do, um, how they help people and just learning the sort of things that I can be looking out for and who I would refer someone to, just finding a bit more knowledge from that I think but we'll see how that day goes, I'm really excited for that because I love safeguarding and protecting people I love that side of healthcare and then that is it for this week so I've done the three shifts I've got tomorrow off but I've got a HARS meeting that I have to go to and just sort out our society and things like that so I, even though I'm off I'm actually at uni and I'm doing things it's just don't think it's counted as part of the hours but I'm there I'm doing it and then I've got my bank shift on Sunday I will see you all I won't vlog tomorrow so I'll see you all on Wednesday, update you about my training session that I had. Just a brief one because I am going to go more into detail and do a proper vlog on that one for the buddy mentoring scheme at university and then Thursday I'll vlog all about my safeguarding so I'll see you then. So it is Wednesday the 5th of September, I'm on my way to Birmingham City University for my first day of training for the buddy mentor scheme and I'm so excited. I just, I, I'm excited because it's going to be amazing. <laughs> I'm so excited to get a new student and show them the way of Birmingham. Another reason I love coming down this way because it's just a really nice university and I get really excited. So yeah, I shall see you later. <laughs> for the day what a day so I was there nine till five I got to meet all of the other buddies that's going to be a mentor as well we got just updates on 
what we were going to be doing and what's expected of us for the week, what events and stuff we can get involved in. So we're going to be attending all the events with students and then we're going to have the option to do all these different things. We're going to have competitions between us all. We've been split into two teams, yellow and blue. So it's a competition between the yellow and blue team. I'm the yellow team and we're going to gain points, like house points, to win the house cup at the end of the week. And if anyone knows me, I'm really competitive. So I'm going to be really rooting for our team and we're going to win. Because if we don't win, I'm going to be not happy. <laughs> so yes, I'm going to be motivating and cheering my team, team on to win that cup because I want that cup at the end of the week and I want it in my vlog by the end of the week. But um, I'll update you on how it all goes and we'll see what happens. And yeah, so that's it from now, from today. And I shall see you next week. I am en route to my safeguarding day. I'm not too sure what to expect because I haven't really worked with the safeguarding team before. In where I work in sexual health, we sometimes refer people on to safeguarding. But to be honest, I've got no idea what they do behind the scenes. So it's going to be really, really useful for me to see what they do behind the scenes. And it's, it's going to be really eye-opening, I think. But I'm really excited for it. I'm really keen to learn everything they do and what I can do as a nurse. And I'll let you all know, as always, later when I finish. And I'm back. I'm comfortable, I've got my hoodie on, I am ready to tell you all about my amazing day. So firstly, I want to say sorry because I thought I was with the safeguarding team and I wasn't. I was with, oh God, it's so embarrassing. I was with the Birmingham and Solihull CCG people who take charge of the continuing healthcare. So I'm gonna tell you exactly what they do now. A short version of what they do is they decide yes or no whether a person gets funding for the care that they, um, they need basically. So let's just say someone's in hospital, they've been admitted before, okay so before their life in hospital they were able-bodied, whether that's the right term or not I don't know, but they're, they're able-bodied, they can do things on their own, they're not in any pain, they haven't got any health conditions, they've got nothing. They're quite capable of doing everyday activities alone independently or they might just need small amounts of help maybe from the family members or anything like that. So it comes to a point where someone has gone up a level so they need a lot more care than people can manage. So let's just say for example you've got a patient on a ward that's come in, been admitted with a stroke and it's completely affected their life and they can't use their leg maybe. So they can't walk efficiently, they're in a lot of pain maybe they have got a lot of nutrition problems, they've got swallowing problems so they can't swallow properly which is causing a knock-on effect to their nutrition, it's causing a knock-on effect to their skin because if you're not if you're not getting the right nutrition and diet intake your skin's going to break down, you're more risk of pressure areas, like this whole vicious cycle so this person needs to be, when they're discharged they need an extra level of care. They need more one-to-one -one or they need someone to come in in the morning and evenings to check on them and turn them and give them pressure relief, fluids, medications, all of these different things. That's when the nurses before discharging them will say, okay, this person needs care before they go home because it's not safe for them to go home alone with nothing. So then they'll do a assessment tool form that'll get sent off so then if they score quite high on that, they then go on to do the proper screening tool, which is really in depth about their health and well-being, continence basically, psychological, communication needs, their mobility, their skin, literally head to toe, inside out, every single detail has to be on this form. And that will then get sent to these people that I went with today. And they go through the form and they basically say, okay, Either, yes, okay, this person is desperate need of extra care, we can approve that and get somewhere sorted for them. There'll be another team in the building that does deals with care homes and placing the patient in a care home or giving them agency carers that visit the house and then they have to do all of the funding breakdowns. So how much is that going to cost that patient? How, what sort of funding do they need? What's the cheapest as well? Because it's, it's not an ever-growing money tree, so they have to be um, really strategic about it in a way. So 
there's a lot of work that goes on in the background that you just don't think of. It was really interesting to see that. And once they decide, okay, this person needs care, okay, let's sort out the care. So then they put the care in place and then that patient can be discharged. And then there's another form, there's another assessment form. So if you've got a patient that is in a ward, a nursing home, wherever, a hospice maybe, a home, even at home, maybe they're being cared for at home, but suddenly, or even not even suddenly, maybe even gradually, but they're at the end of their life now, so they need that immediate care. They, they can't wait for however many weeks or days that this takes. This needs to be within the next 24 hours decision because they're coming to the end of the life care and they need that to make that person as comfortable as possible for the end of their days, basically. Then they fill out a fast track screening tool. This will be not as in depth as the the other screening tool. It'll just be okay. Give us all the information. Make it really important. Make it say that it's end of life. What you need. What you want. What the patient needs are. What's wrong with the patient. Any concerns. Anything like that. Just this box, basically, just full of all of the information. And they look at that and they approve it. And they're just like, yep, yeah, okay. This person definitely needs all of the extra care possible. And that particular fast track screening tool has to be completed within 24 hours as a strict rule. But they have a maximum of 48 hours. So how do they use the screening tool to assess whether they give the fund into a patient or not? That's a very good question that I'm going to answer. Basically they've got all of these different sections and they're graded sort of low, moderate, high level. Someone will assess whether they're high or moderate, low and then but they don't just go on symptoms so let's just say someone's in a lot of pain because they, oh there's a pain one on there as well. Someone's in a lot of pain that's not enough to warrant extra care. So they could have a couple of symptoms but that doesn't necessarily mean they need the funding for that extra care. So basically what they look at is not just the symptoms but they look at it as a whole picture. So they have an MDT meeting with people like physiotherapists, GPs, solicitors, social care workers, and occupational therapists, the nurses, the matrons, the consultants, the surgeons, they anyone that's involved in that patient's care already. So they take all of this into consideration from different angles and different views, how the patient is, then they come to their conclusion after that. So it's like this real big circle of holism at the end and it's how everything's in interlinked with each other. Let's say someone's got had the stroke, I'll use the stroke example as well. So let's just say someone's had a stroke, so then they've got dysphagia, means they can't swallow properly, which is then linked to nutrition because they're not getting enough nutrition. If their nutrition's gone down, they're going to get pressure sores. So then that's linked into the skin. And then if they've got pressure sores, they might be in a lot of pain with it. So then that's linked into the pain management. And then if they're in a lot of pain with the pressure sores and the nutrition, it's then going to have a massive turnaround knock-on effect on their psychological well-being because they're going to be anxious. They're going to be distressed. They're going to be emotionally worn out probably because, you know, if you haven't got the energy going into your body... You're not gonna have the energy to do things, to be motivated, so then it's gonna have another knock-on effect to the mobility. Do you get what, where I'm going with this? Um, so it's like this massive, everything's chained and interlinked together, and they have to show that on the assessment form to get the funding, so then they look at it from that angle and they think, do you know what, this person needs something in place. So I've taken a lot from today and I've learned so much about what the team do and it's been an amazing experience and now I can put this into my own practice. So from this I, I saw that actually it's really really important with documentation to make sure you be specific and put dates and times. So if someone's had a fall, okay, what dates did they fall? Was it more than once? When did they fall? Was it at night? Was it in the day? Why did they fall? Did they trip? Like really be proper specific on these forms because if there's not enough information or if it hasn't been signed, if there's anything missing from it, they will send it back to you and you will have to do that form again and it's gonna be a massive delay for your patients. If anyone's watching this that, that does this and refers patients to, for this sort of thing, just be really, really mindful and just make sure that every single details on there don't let anything delay the patient's care 
and just for me so when I go out into placement or when I've qualified even and if I've got a referral to do I know that I know what they're looking for now so I know what sort of patients I will be referring on to receive this and it was just nice to see how documentation should look but then also see okay actually there was something missing on that like that doesn't give me a whole picture of this patient this could be added possibly anyway I could talk all day about what I've witnessed today and it's just been a really great day I really loved it really enjoyed myself really really learned a lot today I've took a lot away from this and that's it so that's it guys thank you so much for tuning in and watching if you haven't subscribed subscribe that'd be amazing thank you Love you. Bye.